Hello, I'm Battalion Chief Dave Dodson. The challenges that face today's fire officers have never been greater. Our fire service offers many services that require highly specialized skills and equipment to meet the needs expected by our communities. Additionally, we are responding to more incidents and calls for service. Granted, we seem to be responding to fewer actual fires, which adds the challenge of developing and maintaining essential fire suppression skills that have been the hallmark of our profession. If that's not enough, the fires we are responding to are faster moving and more intense than ever, thanks to low mass synthetics. Flashovers are happening faster, increasing the chance for firefighter injuries and deaths. Never has it been more important for responding firefighters to rapidly read fire situations and make quick tactical decisions to prevent flashovers and ultimately control building fires. The ability to read smoke can help you understand fire behavior within a building and help you predict hostile fire events such as flashover. This training program has been designed to introduce you to the reading smoke process and show you how to rapidly interpret the smoke issuing from a burning building so that you can make better tactical choices. The ability to read smoke is founded in three essential concepts. Let's start by looking at these three concepts. The first concept is simple. Smoke is fuel. Smoke is the product of incomplete combustion. Specifically, smoke is an aggregate of particulates, aerosols, and gases. Particulates are suspended solids like carbon, dust, and fibers that can readily support burning. An aerosol is a suspended liquid. In smoke, the aerosols include water vapor and hydrocarbons like oil and tar. Because of plastics, we are seeing more hydrocarbons in the so-called routine fire. There are many gases in smoke. The gases that make smoke so explosive include, but are not limited to, carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, benzene, and acrolein. The second concept has to do with changes in contents that are typical to most buildings. The advent of synthetic materials have changed the fuel we call smoke. Most homes and commercial buildings are filled with low mass plastics that break down quickly when heated, releasing volumes of volatile smoke. Mass is heat resistance. With less material mass, it takes less time for heated building contents to start off-gassing smoke. Not only do these contents off-gas quicker, but the volume of particulates and hydrocarbons has increased tenfold. The last concept is perhaps the most important. Smoke will ignite provided it reaches its right temperature and is in a proper mixture with air. Smoke gases that are above their ignition temperature just need a proper air mix to self-ignite. A firefighter that opens a door or takes out a window can provide the air needed to trigger smoke ignition. Trap smoke that is below its ignition temperature can flash or pop with the sudden introduction of a spark or ember if air is available. These trigger points cause the hostile fire events that injure firefighters. With an understanding of these three concepts, you can begin the process of reading smoke. Like any process, there are application guidelines that we follow in reading smoke. Let's look at these guidelines. First, reading smoke is not an absolute science. Just like any fire, smoke is dynamic and is influenced by many variables. The process presented in this training program 
is a summary of classic and proven observations by experienced fire officers from all over the country. Second, reading smoke is an outside activity and it doesn't take too long. That is, you can apply the process as you arrive at an incident. Next, Reading smoke is all about comparing smoke from various openings. The more sides of a building you see, the more complete your smoke read can be. Finally, reading smoke is just that. Don't get sucked into watching flames. Flames are at their end potential. The future of the incident is found in the smoke behavior. Reading smoke is a simple three-step process. First, Inventory and compare the four attributes of smoke, which are volume, velocity, density, and color. Next, evaluate if the building size or weather is influencing the key attributes. Finally, determine the rate of change. In other words, how fast are the smoke attributes changing? Let's break this down and show you how to interpret what you see. Smoke has four distinct attributes that need to be considered. The four attributes are volume, velocity, density, and color. It is the comparative analysis of these attributes that paints the fire picture and helps you predict what will happen next. Let's look at each attribute. Smoke volume by itself tells us very little about a fire. More information is needed to truly understand the fire. Smoke volume can set an impression about the type of event it took to fill the building. For example, a small building can be filled with smoke from a simple cooking mishap. Conversely, it would take a significant event to fill a big box store or office building with smoke. Once a room or compartment within a building is filled with smoke, it will start pressurizing. This can help us understand smoke velocity. Smoke velocity refers to the visual speed and force of smoke as it leaves the building and is reflective of the pressure that is built up within a compartment. We can use smoke velocity to help us understand fire dynamics and fire location. Smoke velocity can be either volume pushed or heat pushed. Let's look at an example of each. Smoke that leaves a building and is quick to slow or dissipate usually indicates volume push smoke. Smoke velocity that leaves and keeps its energy or speed will always indicate heat push smoke. Upon arrival, a fire officer can quickly compare smoke velocities and heat rise levels to help locate the seat of the fire. To make this work, the officer must compare only like-sized openings. The size of the opening ultimately impacts the speed that smoke can leave. In this example, heat push smoke is issuing from many areas. The smoke from unrestricted openings indicates serious heat on the A side that is extended to the B side. Smoke issuing from restricted openings shows significant heat has extended into the upper area of the structure towards the C side. The seat of the fire is A side, third floor, with extension through an open hallway to the B side and up a rear stairwell to the top floor. When watching smoke velocity, also look at its flow characteristic. Smoke can be laminar flow, which is straight line air current flow, or it can be turbulent. Turbulent smoke flow is caused by extreme heat and radiant heat feedback. This is the number one warning sign that a flashover is about to occur. The smoke leaving this building is turbulent. Some call this boiling or supercharged smoke. This is a sure sign of impending flashover. The heat in the smoke has reached levels that are not survivable for victims. Further, a firefighter entering this environment is taking an extraordinary risk with little to be gained. The third attribute to observe is smoke density, or thickness of the smoke. In essence, this tells you how severe the fire is about to become. 
Smoke that has obtained tremendous thickness indicates that the fire is vent controlled. That is, the airflow to the fire is being restricted and therefore burning has become more incomplete. The thicker the smoke, the more explosive it has become. Thick smoke also sets up a continuity of fuel that can spread the fire further and faster regardless of content location. Because of this, smoke density is the most important factor in predicting fire behavior. Remember concept one? Smoke is fuel. The thicker the smoke, the more fuel is laden within the smoke. This is also why a room or hallway distal to the actual fire can ignite so quickly with no warning signs to firefighters. Thick smoke can also be compared to swimming in number two diesel fuel, especially with the amount of plastics off-gassing in today's fires. The last attribute to consider is smoke color. Most fire service curriculums teach us that smoke color indicates the type of material that is burning. While this may be true for single fuel fires or unusual chemicals, it is not very usable for first arriving fire officers. In typical residential and commercial fires, it is rare that a single fuel source is emitting smoke. The smoke seen leaving a building is a mix of colors, ranging from white to black. Let's see what smoke color can really tell us. Smoke color tells us the stage of heating and helps us find the location of the fire within a building. Virtually all solid materials will emit a white smoke when first heated. This white smoke is mostly moisture. As a material dries out and breaks down, the color of the smoke will change. Unfinished wood will change to tan or brown, while plastics and finished surfaces will emit a gray smoke. Gray is a result of moisture and carbons mixing. As materials are further heated, the smoke leaving the material will eventually be all black, regardless of the type of material being heated. When flames touch a surface, the surface will off-gas black smoke almost immediately. Therefore, the darker the smoke, the hotter the smoke. Black smoke that is high velocity and very thin or low density is indicative of flame push smoke. In other words, the fire is nearby. Smoke color can also help you find the location of a fire. As smoke leaves a fuel that is ignited, it heats up other materials and the moisture from those materials can cause black smoke to lighten in color. As smoke travels, carbon content from the smoke will deposit along surfaces and objects, which also tends to lighten the smoke color. Smoke that is forced through cracks and seams will filter off the carbons. So that leads to the question, is the white smoke you see a result of early stage heating or late stage heating smoke that has traveled some distance? To answer, just look at the velocity. White smoke that has its own pressure or push is indicating distance. White smoke that is slow or lazy is most likely indicative of early stage heating. One more important note about smoke color, namely brown smoke. Unfinished wood gives off a distinctive brown smoke as it approaches late stage heating or just prior to flaming. In so many cases, the only unfinished wood in a structure is the wall studs, floor joists, and roof rafters or trusses. Therefore, brown smoke issuing from structural spaces can tell you that the fire is transitioning from a contents fire to a structural fire. Using our knowledge of building construction, especially lightweight structural components and gusset plates, the issuance of brown smoke from gable end vents, eaves, and floor seams become a warning sign that structural integrity is being lost. Remember also that engineered wood products like OSB, oriented strand board, or LVL, which is laminated veneer lumber, lose strength when heated. 
The glues of these products break down with heat and don't necessarily need flames to come apart. We've covered the four attributes of smoke and shown how they can help you understand the location and fire behavior within a building. But this is just the first step in reading smoke. Next, you have to decide if anything is influencing the four attributes. The building size, number of ventilation points, as well as outside weather can change the meaning of volume, velocity, density, and color. Let's look at some examples. The size of the compartment and the number of points that smoke is issuing from can help shape the meaning of volume, velocity, density, and color. Remember, a small volume of slow, thin, white smoke coming from more than one point of a large building can still indicate a large fire well within that building. Don't be fooled by light smoke showing from large buildings. Outside weather can also impact smoke attributes. Wind influences should be obvious. Sub-freezing weather can cause dark smoke to turn white very quickly. Cold air also causes smoke to lose its velocity or heat quicker. The last step in reading smoke includes making a judgment about the rate of change. Specifically, how fast are the attributes of smoke changing? As a rule, if density and color are getting thicker and darker within seconds, the fire is getting worse and the chance for smoke ignition is increasing. If dense smoke gets thinner, it is likely that the fire has found air and is burning off the smoke. We've shown you the process to read smoke. Hopefully, you've found some useful information to help you with rapid decision making. We would now like to show you how the whole process can work with some real examples. Before we do, we'd like to present some summary shortcuts to help speed your smoke reading. Remember though, shortcuts are just that. They help most of the time but must be considered as part of the whole picture. Turbulent smoke means a flashover is imminent. Once again, this is an important warning sign of impending flashover. Brown smoke comes from the mid to late stage heating of wood. In other words, the wood is off gassing and ready to ignite. In most cases, brown smoke means the fire is transitioning to the wood structural elements of the building. If smoke leaving multiple openings is the same color and same velocity, you should suspect a deep-seated fire. Deep-seated could mean a fire well within a building or a fire in concealed spaces. Whitish smoke that has its own energy or speed means you have a hot fire, but the smoke you see has traveled some distance. Smoke that is thin, black, and rapidly moving is flame-driven. This means the fire is nearby. Now it's practice time. We're going to show you several examples. Each example will be shown twice. The first time, we will refrain from our interpretations and give you an opportunity to read the smoke. Feel free to pause the image and talk it out with your crew. We will then rerun the example and point out the meaning of significant smoke observations. In this example, first arriving apparatus can see a little bit of smoke coming from a strip row of stores, but no fire. 
Let's look at what this smoke is telling us. First, the smoke leaving the roof area of the AD corner is volume pushed, thin, and light in color. The occupancy below appears clear. The smoke leaving the roof from the BC area is a bit more thick, has more color, and rises more than the AD smoke. Notice also that the window and door glass at Pharaoh's is slightly smoke obscured. The smoke, however, lacks the pressure to even push past the closed blinds. None of the smoke appears to be changing in volume, velocity, or color within the 25 seconds that you had to view. From these observations, we can make the initial assessment that a small confined fire is burning within the rear of Pharaoh's restaurant, perhaps the kitchen or grease hood. Although confined, smoke and heat appear to have a path to the other occupancies through a shared roof or ceiling space. When access is made to the restaurant, firefighters should watch to see if smoke velocity increases from the roof area. If so, firefighters should prepare for lateral fire spread in the roof structure. In any case, vertical ventilation should help with all containment efforts. Okay, let's see how you did as we break down the second example. First, we have smoke being pushed through multiple restrictive openings. The lowest level is the floor seam between the first and second floor, and the highest level is from the facade covering the uppermost part of the B wall. Notice that much of the smoke has a uniform velocity, density, and color. Next, Notice that the window glass is mostly clear towards the A side. The windows in the center of the first floor and those towards the C side on the second floor seem to be cloudy. A closer look shows higher velocity smoke coming from the roof side of the facade as well as the C side attic vent. The uniform velocity and color of the smoke from multiple restrictive openings indicates a deep-seated fire. Specifically, the smoke is telling us that the seat of this fire is in the floor space between the first and second floor, near the center of the building, but favoring the B wall. Most significant, though, is the heat push smoke coming from the facade. This fire is making a run up through concealed spaces into the roof structure.
The room and contents fire is obvious, but this incident is so much more than the obvious. This is a serious fire in a serious building. The smoke is telling us just how serious the incident is. Let's break it down. First, your eyes are naturally drawn to the post flashover room fire. Looking past that, the smoke coming from the next window to your right is thin, moving fast, and is slightly filtered coming out of the cracks. Next, the smoke coming from the windows further to the right is mostly high velocity, quite thick, and brown. The window to the left of the fire room shows smoke that is unrestricted, thick, and brown. Smoke coming from the decorative roof edge is high velocity and changing to turbulent flow. The adjoining three-story building is showing volume push smoke from multiple areas on the second and third floors as well as the roof line. This fire has gained control of the two-story building and is spreading to the adjacent three-story building. Specifically, firefighters can expect active fire in the two or three rooms nearest the visible fire, as well as fire spread into the roof structure. Additionally, the fire has pathways to the adjacent three-story building through center hallways and combustible voids. We hope this training program has given you some usable tools to help you read smoke. Once you capture the basics and start practicing, your ability to read smoke will improve rapidly. Further, if you make decisions based on what the smoke is doing, you'll find that your tactical decisions will be better aligned with the fire behavior within that building. The key here, though, is to practice. In an environment where we are seeing less fires, that may seem impractical. The solution is to find fire ground video, much like what we've done here, and practice the process. Thank you for taking the time to view this training program. And remember, don't just be safe. Go out there, read smoke, then make it safe.